Lakeland Public Television presents Currents. Hello, welcome to Lakeland Currents. I'm Bethany Wesley. In 1990, the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe established its Leech Lake Tribal College, first offering courses in extension from the University of Minnesota Duluth, Bemidji State University, and Itasca and Brainerd Community Colleges. The Tribal College celebrated its first graduate in 1993 and then 17 more in 1994. Today, there are approximately 350 students enrolled at the college and it has celebrated more than 525 graduates. We will momentarily turn our attention to our two guests here this evening, but before we do, we're going to see a short report from Lakeland News as Brenda Mack reports on a celebration held last month in recognition of the 25th anniversary of Leech Lake Tribal College. We came from a long way back to what we have today. And what we have today can stand the test of time. It first started as a vision, and today it has become a reality. We must keep our language alive, keep our culture alive, keep our spirituality alive. It was 25 years ago when one man's hunger to teach his people has fueled his passion to start an institution. And that institution is what Leech Lake Tribal College is today. Never have I met students who are so hungry to learn. 25 years later, the school has gained recognition from state officials. Congratulations again on 25 years. With more than 350 students to date, the college has become a place for its people. The tribal college cared in a way that was more like family. You don't find that. And I mean, it makes learning fun then. And for some, it is a place for self-discovery. I feel like I found my sense of place in the world. Like I know who I am now. I'm not, you know, an outsider, like I don't know who I am, I don't know where I fit in, I, I know where, who I am and I know where I fit in and I know what I want to do and I always know I can fall back on my community and my culture and my language whenever I need to and it's just a positive thing. The college also welcomes its new president today. I'm elated, uh, I'm honored and I look forward to uh, starting the next 25 years with Leech Lake Tribal College. The former Wider Nation chairwoman will replace Dr. Ginny Carney and looks forward to getting the school accredited again. The key out of, uh, out of poverty is education. You know, education is the only thing that no one can ever take away from you. In Bemidji, Brenna Mack, Lakeland News. Allow me now to introduce my guests this evening. I'm pleased to have joining me tonight Larry Aitken, the founder and first president of Leech Lake Tribal College, who still is an Ojibwe instructor, and Melanie Wilson, director of assessment and institutional research. Hello. Welcome to the program, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Larry, take us back to the before the college was even started. What were you hearing from people? Were they asking for an additional educational opportunities in the area, or what led you to kind of first think about well, the tribal college? I used to be a scholarship officer for the Minnesota Chippewa tribe, where we gave a certain amount of dollars toward their tuition, books, and fees. And uh, my brothers and I and some area educators got together. And it was always such a bind to get into college, to enroll them in college and keep them there. And uh, <clears throat> boy, it was really tough. And uh, students were having problems in the wintertime with flat tires and frozen batteries. And uh, so commuting to Bemidji State University was a, was a chore. Okay. And uh, staying at the University of Minnesota Duluth was a chore. You had to find housing and you know, off-campus rides and so forth. And my brothers and I were uh, uh, really high on education because we had a mother that uh, raised us to say education is most important. And she raised all six of us by herself, and every single one of us graduated from college. Oh, wow. And uh, when she was 52 years old, she got her high school diploma. Oh, cool. And uh, so she understood the value of education, and we did too. And so uh, when we were, uh, Talking about education, wherever we're at, it was a struggle for students to, to get into college, 
to get financial aid, to get signed up, and to find housing. And sometimes not in that order. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were uh, uh, scouting about the area, and somebody said, uh, there's a travel college uh, out in uh, uh, South Dakota, Sydney Grisco University. And uh, it's a two-year institution, four-year institution, you get a master's degree from there. Uh -huh. And uh, Dr. Lionel Bordeaux was the president. And so we, we had talks with him. Okay. And he said, the key to education is to educate your own people right in their homeland. Okay. And uh, that made a lot of sense to us. And uh, my brother Joe was a state Indian scholarship officer. And he had state monies uh, offered to the packages of uh, Pell and so forth. And uh, my brother Raj was uh, up and coming guy, he was uh, director of uh, uh, administration of the band, and uh, he had all other responsible positions. Okay. And so we were all talking education when we would get together. And uh, then I, I got a job at the University of Minnesota Duluth, and uh, we immediately uh, found a room that could house our native students. We had coffee and rolls in the morning, and, and we had coffee all day, and it was kind of a home away from home. And that was in Duluth? That was in Duluth, okay. yeah. And uh, so I, I, I noted that, home away from home, and uh, to have people there staffed that uh, knew the students and uh, knew back home, and uh, so we had that kind of a background. And uh, when I came back on a, a sabbatical, uh, I was researching in Leech Lake and I found a couple old resolutions that somebody wanted to start a tribal college way back when. Oh, really? And uh, this was in uh, uh, 1988. Okay. And there was a 19-year-old resolution that said we need our own tribal college. Oh. But the band wasn't ready for that. They couldn't fund it. They didn't know where to look for money. And uh, even though there was a lot of strife on the reservation at that time, tribal college was not one of their priorities. Okay. And uh, it came to pass that uh, one day there was a big rally in, on track 33. And uh, we were housed down uh, downtown uh, at an old uh, Catholic high school. Okay. And uh, so I was visiting with an elder there, and uh, we kept getting interrupted. They said, Larry, the rally's getting bigger. Larry, the rally's getting bigger. Larry, the rally's getting bigger. And maybe you ought to go down there, because I was kind of a intermediary for a lot of things on the reservation. Okay. And uh, so I went down, and I saw there was about 75 to 150 people. Oh, wow. And uh, they're all shouting, and, and there are police forces around Cass County, Beltrami County, Itasca County. They're all there, and they're shouting at them. He said, we were surrounded by all these counties. They can't protect us. He said, uh, yeah, gangs come from Minneapolis and kick in the doors of elders and steal their TVs and take their food. And uh, it's good to be a hellacious place to live. Okay. And, uh, and we want protection. We call Cass County, they can't get here in time. We call Beltrami County, they can't get here in time. We call uh, Itasca County, they can't get here in time. And so we need protection, they're yelling. And how, how are you going to upgrade this so, so we're protected? And they were just police force or cops, you know. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't answer that. That was for the administration. Okay. And uh, well, I looked at the other and I said, We need to go out to Chicago, get the bank. I said, I have an idea. He said, Go ahead. So I said, I have an answer to all your problems. And everybody looked at me and 
the, the group calmed down. And they said, what's the answer to our problem, Mr. Educator? I said, we need a Leech Lake Tribal College. I said, we could develop our own police force. Oh. And, uh, and then we'd have our own, our own uh, people guarding our other people. Oh. And uh, everybody said, it's a good idea. When can you get it going? I said, I'm on the way back to the office now. I'll start it right now. Oh, wow. And so two years later, we had uh, accreditation for living. Okay. And uh, they would uh, uh, come here, give us courses. We would go there and take courses. Okay. And two years later, we got our uniforms. Hmm. And uh, somebody came down and did a piece on us, and he said, uh, brown faces and blue uniforms. And uh, so our people were policing our own people and helping our own people. Okay. And so that was the first instance of a tribal college going. Okay. Were people generally supportive from the get-go? Oh, they were, yes. They thought it was a good idea. Yeah, and uh, older folks were coming to college. Oh, cool. And those that dropped out of school way back when <laughs> were coming back to college and getting their diplomas. Oh, wow. And, uh, there was such a tremendous support, uh, upsurge of, on education again. And so the community was, was uh, infused into inspiring themselves to the children to go to school. And the whole thing was predicated on starting a tribal college. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. And so I got together with a guy from planning, Jamie Robertson, and uh, we talked about it for a couple of lunches. And then we got together and I went to the tribal council and I said, it's about time you took the bull by the horns and faced the situation. And they said, we need a tribal college. They said, well, go ahead and start one. <laughs> and uh, write your letters. We'll support you. Oh, great. And uh, so we wrote our letters and funding was awful. We were trying to get funding from banks and loan officers and do you do that locally, or do you have to reach outside? Well, of first of all, we're locally. Okay. And uh, there was some support there. Okay. And uh, and then we went nationally. Okay. And national educators saw our need, and uh, they began to uh, give us a few dollars here and there. And uh, so we started offering more courses, and we had a charter for the. Uh, tribal colleges that you have to be on your own for a year before you ask for money from their organization. They had an organization called AHEC, American Indian Higher Education Consortium. And uh, that was started in 1969 by Dr. Cardi Monette from Turtle Mountain and Dr. Delano Bordeaux from Sinti Griska University. Okay. And uh, it was growing and growing and growing and there was an upsurge in the 60s anyway, for everybody to get educated and move out and move up and <clears throat> challenge the old guard. And uh, so Tribal Colleges was born under those circumstances. Okay. How is a Tribal College different than like a state-run college? What is the culture, the philosophy at the Leech Lake Tribal College? How does it differ from a more traditional? Well, one of the things that uh, we wanted to do right away was grounded in Anishinaabe values and, uh, and teach language right away, language that would be of the people, Ojibwe language, Ojibwe Buin. And uh, we had elders and community people and families gather and we talk about a necessity of a tribal college. And there was really an upsurge of support and uh, so we had the support of the community, tribal council. All we had to do was put a couple of heads together and write <laughs> for some grants, and we did. Get the funds. <laughs> mm -hmm. When it first started in 1990, did you have a physical structure, or did you have classrooms, or how were people well, taking uh, the courses? We had a small building, a log building, and uh, <clears throat> that was our main office. Okay. And we had classes in there. But, uh, and that was in Cass Lake? Yeah. Okay. But you could see 
uh, right away that this is going to be too small. <laughs> and so I went to the tribal council and asked them if we could use offices that were closed during the evening, okay. for evening classes. Okay. Like Department of Natural Resources had a big uh, uh, conference room. So we utilized that. And the community center and ball club, we went there and asked if we could use the community center. They said, yes, you can. And so we were out, out and about all over the reservation developing classes. And our main core was in Cass Lake. And uh, that was, those were quite the battle years. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's hard to believe that our own people are not educated <clears throat> by a true history. And we we're still reading uh, Columbus Discovered America mm -hmm. and all these other uh, misnomers in history we found out about. And uh, <clears throat> I had developed a uh, uh, Indian Studies program at the University of Minnesota Duluth. <clears throat> and I was there for 12 years teaching. And I came home on a sabbatical, started a travel college. And that's the history of the okay. beginning. And of course, we have a big, beautiful building today. Well, campus, several You buildings. moved into your current campus in, was it 2005? was about yeah yeah okay and that's the one that's over by the by the casino right yeah. off of mm -hmm. off two because yeah. you had moved into previous to that one you you lived you were in the former Cass Lake High School right yeah. downtown yeah. yeah and that had to be a bigger facility but oh, it yeah. still didn't hold you very long no mm -hmm. was it interesting to see how much support and interest there was in the tribal college from the get-go oh yes oh yes. yeah did it surprise you it surprised me yes because Everybody was telling our people that your parents are not involved in education. Your parents don't care about education. You can't get your kids to school. They don't care about high school. They don't care about elementary school. And the downtrodden Indian kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And we fell right into it. We say, yeah, well, okay. And then when the tribal college started, the parents were actually getting educated again mm -hmm. and re-educating their children. And, and, it's and then the community banded together, and they started supporting it too. Mm -hmm. So, so do a, you see? It was a win-win situation there. Do you see instances when parents are going alongside their children? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going oh, to yes. school together. Yep. Oh, oh yes. how fascinating! Yep. And some graduates are now working at the college. There's uh, somebody working in our library now whose daughter is now going to the college. And oh, interesting. So yeah. Melanie, tell us a little bit about your role at the college. What is it and what is it that you do? Well, I'm the director of assessment, um, which doesn't tell you very much. <laughs> Basically, I'm in charge of um, looking at data, but also um, inst so institutional research and institutional effectiveness. So in a nutshell, I'm helping to make sure that the college stays accredited. OK. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about what it's like on campus, because it has a different feel on campus than those maybe traditional colleges. Oh, absolutely. It's much more of a family atmosphere. That's something you'll notice the first time you step onto our campus is how many children there are. Um, people are always surprised when I say that we have children in our classes. Um, parents are encouraged to do whatever it takes to get to class and sometimes that means bringing along their small children. Um, and so we have a lot of resources on campus for parents. We have a lot of food that's offered. We have a lot of um, classes and support systems in place for young parents and uh, it's just a more family atmosphere. I remember there was a photo, I can't remember if it was a couple years ago, but there was a photo of an instructor, of a professor who was calling a baby <laughs> while his or her parent was taking a test mm -hmm. and I, I think it went viral on Facebook, I think is yeah. where I had seen it. That's not unusual. No, not at all. Oh, interesting. Quite common. Is it hard to maintain that kind of family atmosphere support as it has continued to grow and get larger? Um, well, I, you know, I don't think so. Uh, um, I think that as with any large group of people, um, sometimes you have to step in and say, okay, I think the toddler's getting a little rambunctious. Can you take him out in the hallway? But for the most part, uh, we have managed really, really well to maintain that, uh, partly because it's it's a high priority for us. Our priority is to, to support students in whatever way we can, and we have found that that's what works best for our students, is that they feel that they are in a, a culturally supportive environment where their language is spoken, where 
um, there are cultural activities and where their families are welcome. That's really important. So Larry, when you see what the college is today, is it still reflective of all the goals and ambitions you had? Oh, absolutely. Started? It was grounded in, in education. It was grounded in Anishinaabe values. And that's what this uh, Jamie Robertson and I put down as a mission. It better be grounded in the values and the culture and uh, for the people. Okay. And it still is. And that's still our mission. Mm -hmm. uh, get a college education grounded in Anishinaabe values. Because we have, uh, we teach a host of classes there now that, uh, for example, I teach philosophy, native philosophy, okay. and native uh, psychology, and uh, native history. And that's way different. The history from the truth. Mm -hmm. And, uh, our people are, are excited and uh, they're uh, in awe of history the way they, they used to see it, the way it really is. And uh, so it has to be grounded in Anishinaabe values, which you value your life first, and uh, you value your family, and then you value your community. And that's uh, Anishinaabe values. And, uh, it's, uh, I, I happy, I'm happy to see that we have a lot of coffee clutches uh, along the hallway and people, groups of people talking and uh, if they cut class, I'll go down to the lunchroom and, hey, you, you, you're going to be in my class, come on over. <laughs> and uh, that kind of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And uh, so professors are, uh, are geared to the community because they're related to some of them mm -hmm. and uh, it's a really homing atmosphere. Tell us a little bit about the programs that are offered which when people are coming into school what is it that they're really mm -hmm. seeking to learn about? Well we have quite a few programs people are surprised to learn how many we have nine associates degrees and a one-year diploma as well um, so we have degrees in early childhood <coughs> education, <coughs> law enforcement, um, forest ecology, earth system science, indigenous leadership, um, carpentry. We, ha we have a lot of new programs that we're developing right now. And so um, we, that's our area of growth, is trying to meet the needs of the community. And whenever we do build a new program, it, has, it comes from the community. It's what they need and what they want and what we have um, discovered is, is what's needed in the industries locally. So. So in law enforcement, I heard you mention that one. That was one that was obviously in mind when you first started. Yes. continues mm -hmm. to be a pretty yep. popular program. Yep. Oh, great. It is. It's one of our most popular programs. Um, I was seeing online a lot of the opportunities that take place even outside of the classroom. In fact, right now there's um, summer interns who are studying climate change. Yep. Is that pretty important to the college to make sure they're having real life experiences outside of the books and outside of the Yes, desk? absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. How important is it? Well, it's something that um, we really focus on, especially if in the sciences. Um, it's so easy to, to take students outside and get them uh, looking at the environment and how what they're learning impacts their local um, living situation. So our forest ecology degree, for example, they go out and they collect bugs, they collect water samples, they go back into the lab and using microscopes they're actually counting. So they're working on um, doing research that is that they can turn around and they can present. And it's research that impacts their tribe and their land. So it's very meaningful. Um, and then with our indigenous leadership, for example, we have one instructor, Elaine Fleming, she's fairly well known. And um, she does a lot of work with history. She does some really hands-on, beautiful hands-on work with students, um, taking them out. In fact, there's a, a small museum in Bemidji. I can't think of the name of it now, but it's the rail. It's where the railroad oh, the used rail to be. Folk school. Yeah, and there's but there's a um, a display that her students created for the museum on the history of the people oh. in the area, and it's a permanent display. So these are the kinds of things that we that 
mean that are real learning for students. These are the kinds of things that have a lasting impact on them and their communities, and that's that's what we focus on. Because then the students can only see what they've learned and put into action, but they can see that they can impact and affect the mm -hmm. greater community yes. even outside yes. of their term. Interesting. So tell me a little bit about the future. What is the goals for Leech Lake Tribal College? You know, you just passed 25 years, mm -hmm. which has to be just amazing for oh, you to see. <clears throat> what do the next 25 years hold? Well, I know that we want to grow. I know um, we want to grow. We want to get into a, a four-year curriculum. Mm -hmm. Okay. And probably a master's degree. We probably would uh, map it after Sinti Griska University because they started out as a two-year institution, went to a four-year and then I went to a master's program, and now they're in the doctoral program. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. So I see ourselves doing that same thing. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that want from students as well? Yes. Because yeah. right now, if they finish at Leech Lake, they can transfer to another four yep. years. Yes. But yep. if they could stay, <coughs> you've heard from students, they oh, would yes, prefer to stay. Oh, yes, they'd stay. Yes, they would. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're a little afraid of that big step out. <laughs> yeah. From big sister, big brother, and my teacher. And uh, they're afraid to go to Bemidji. They're afraid to go to Brainerd and Duluth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's a big step away from home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, uh, I used to work for a medicine man by the name of Jim Jackson. He had a dream that <clears throat> the answer to boarding schools, which is a real dark history uh, of our time, and uh, the answer to boarding schools are tribal colleges. And uh, that made a lot of sense to me. So we have articulated uh, in indigenous traditional wisdom into today's classroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, that made a lot of sense. And uh, Jim had these dreams. And uh, of course, the Ojibwe mindset is predicated on dreams. Okay. The whole world was created by a dream. And uh, so we have that in our background. And every single student ought to know about their own history. They ought to know about their own land, the treaties. They ought to know about government. They ought to know about traditional. Uh, they all study traditionality, but few of them do it. Now they're getting more and more into doing it. And we're part of it. Well, I mm -hmm. want to thank you guys both for joining me tonight. We've learned a lot about Leech Lakes Tribal College's history. We look forward to seeing more of its growth in the future. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on this latest episode of Lakeland Currents. Please join me the next time.